so these back-to-back -back tournaments are pretty brutal. It's a uh, championship Sunday for 10 anglers out there on Okeechobee, but today is a travel day for us. We've got a seven hour drive up to stop number two, which is Lake Seminole, right there in the Florida, Florida, Georgia panhandle there. So, you know, I just went through my whole checklist of moving this giant RV uh, from water to electric to cleaning up the dog poop out here in the yard. You know, I flicked it into the lake there. Uh, you know, it'll, it'll break down naturally. Shut off all the gas propane, all the electronics and all the ACs, all that stuff is all off. And we just hooked up the big giant uh, fifth wheel slash gooseneck. This is kind of a hybrid rig here. That was kind of the checklist there. We broke down the RV, or we hooked up the RV in about 30 minutes or so. Oh, here comes a seven hour drive to the next stop, man. And uh, life as a touring angler, it never stops. <laughs> Here's, here's the situation. Practicing out here on Lake Seminole. The bite's kind of sporadic and tough. I just, I'm covering a bunch of water right now and there's a boat directly behind me. I'm gonna put you in the shade here. I've, so I just I just hooked a fish. It's a, I don't know how big it is, it's big. It's like buried down in the grass on a very long cast. There's a boat like right in front of me. So what I did, it hasn't jumped yet and I think it's still hooked but I'm gonna act like I'm doing a little bit of tackle here and see if I can reel this fish in and see how big this thing is without him noticing. You know, to him, he thinks I'm just doing tackle. So let's see if we can pull this off. I don't, I don't think he saw that. Look at the size of this bass. Guggen swim jig. Look at the size of that thing, dude. That's a giant. Well. You guys are gonna get to ride along again in practice. That's my first fish today. That is an absolute tanker. That's the thing to bass fishing is <laughs> whenever you get a little clue, whenever you get a little clue like this, you gotta keep a secret. <laughs> Unless one of your buddies calls and you can't lie to them, but, but that's a giant one. It's like six pounds. It's a good little clue. You guys are gonna get to ride along with me yet again. Uh, practicing out here, Lake Seminole. This is one of those southeast fisheries, loaded full of grass. It's a giant fishery. It reminds me of like a Gunnersville or a San Rayburn. It's like an East Texas Lake Gunnersville. And there's grass everywhere. I just had my first bite here this morning. You guys get to hang out once again. Uh, I got a ball of salad in the bottom of the boat here, but that was an awesome bite. I kind of have to keep it quiet because that competitor's still in front of me. We tried to hide it from him. And I think we did that successfully. So you guys are gonna ride along. Let's get back to fishing because that was a freaking tanker. We're in the pre-spawn phase. Uh, I'm using a Lake Master card here, and it's real simple. To me, these fish are gonna be moving to you know these coves, these little backwater areas. Um, sometime within the next week, we have uh, warming temperatures, 80 degrees. So what I'm doing is I'm fishing all the outskirts, where basically where it's yellow, anywhere from four to six feet of water up here is two to three feet. They will be spawning in there sometime soon. I'm looking for clear water, um, but I'm basically burning a swim jig, burning a chatter bait, burning a swim bait, all through these yellow areas that indicate four, five, six feet of water. Typical pre-spawn, and again, this is just a river rain type of lake, main channel through here. And I'm just gonna fish all the protected areas. Anything that's red indicates potential spawning areas. Anything that's yellow is gonna be potential pre-spawn areas. So that's the setup for today. We're gonna cover a whole bunch of water. We're gonna try to catch as many fish as we can, try to shake off a few. But the name of the game in these pre-spawn type tournaments on these grassy fisheries, is find an area where there's grass lines, find an area where if a cold front comes through, then the, you know the fish could back out on these grass lines and kind of stage back up. So. That's what we're looking for, especially after catching that big fat six pounder, especially when I'm practicing here. This allows me to duplicate, you know, this bite, this scenario throughout the rest of practice. I still have two days of practice left. So I'm trying to duplicate this exa exact scenario. And it starts with this back cove right here. And I showed you on the map, it was kind of that red color. So let's go down here. That red right through there, all this red right through there. It's a big cove. And I, when I went through there, it, it's all it's all super clear water, clean, shallow, very very grassy, but clean water. The rest of the lake out here is dirty. So there's kind of this nice little line right here of clean water versus dirty water. It all just kind of mixes up right here where that fish was just caught, and it just kind of mixes up in this little cove right here. So we're in this little 
offshore cove and the fish was just hanging out right in here so let's try to duplicate that scenario throughout the rest of the day and it's just it's a it's a, a kind of a textbook pre-spawn spot where it's a little bit deeper it's a depression inside of a flat right here so it's a nice little depression and it's a very good pre-spawn area the biggest thing though is i look at 360 and you don't need all this stuff i mean to to find a pre-spawn bite like this but it helps um but i'm i'm just i'm i'm wrapped her down right here and there's these little holes you know 40 feet out 50 feet out 60 feet out and that's what they hang around and move in so let's try to duplicate this throughout the rest of the day all right let me get nat geo on you real quick See those black birds? Those are all comorants right there. See the white birds with them? Those are pelicans. But there's this giant line of comorants diving. Look at, look at the pelican trying to get a piece of The comorants are all working in a line, working in a line and diving and pushing all this bait fish, you know, probably shad and bluegill upwards and the pelicans are picking them off. It's pretty crazy how they're all working together. Well, the pelicans are trying to punk them but those nasty birds, all those comorants are just literally combing the bottom and pushing bait fish upwards. All right, that's another couple bites in front of one of these spawning areas here. I worked further back into the spawning area. I don't feel like they're there yet. That doesn't mean they're not gonna be there at the end of the week with these 80 degree temps, uh, but they're not quite there yet. So the goal still, is to find those kind of deeper ditches and drop-offs and isolated clumps of grass where a school of big ones can hang out just before they go in. Look at all these birds. Like, look at that. Like, they just did a number on this spot. All right, so I did some, like, weird stuff. I, uh, you know, the first half of the day, I established a really solid pattern, but I got away from it. I really wanted to try some other things. Um, and those other things were, you know, jerking timber for suspended fish. Um, you know, I fished a bridge with a swim bait, um, you know, a little causeway area. I, I tried some, you know, a swim bait on rocks, just trying to mix it up a little bit. I even punched a giant stretch here uh, to no avail. So um, that just makes me feel even better about what I found this morning. So um, as we're kind of wrapping up today, you know, the sun is finally starting to pop back out, but it's getting really low. Um, you know, I'm kind of wrapping up day two of practice here. Uh, I feel really good about that stuff we found this morning. So uh, I get to dream about it tonight. And uh, you know, that big giant one that bit that swim jig, um, I could think about where I can apply it tomorrow, which is the last day of practice. So um, that's what I'm working with today. Not a bad second day of practice. I talked to a few other guys, they weren't doing very well at all. So to have a six plus pounder, uh, you know, bite my, my swim jig on the second day of practice, that gives me all day tomorrow to expand on that and I'm looking forward to seeing how the week progresses so you really have to stay on top of these fish with these water temperatures rising each and every day so it's been cloudy all day but the Sun's finally starting to pop out here late in the day we got to keep an eye on the, the air temperature the water temperature and also keep on checking those spawning areas so that's it for today we'll see you guys in the morning Good morning. It's uh, day three of practice here, Bainbridge, Georgia. I decided to uh, launch at the host ramp. Just an awesome facility here. I mean, a giant facility. Birds are chirping, the squirrels are running, like literally spring is in the air. And look at that. It's straight up painted a giant bass logo on one of the little levees here. I really want to learn just the, you know, running the river. Uh, we're launching way up here in Bainbridge, which is way, way, way up the river. So you got to run like 20 plus miles down to that area, that spawning area where I caught that big one yesterday. So I want to kind of learn the channels and also um, just run, run some swim bait stuff. So I'm going to pick up a swim bait and run all the little channel swing banks, uh, current, if I could find any rocks, just something different. That 20 plus mile run, I, I want a couple spots I could just stop on and just throw a big swim bait on. I'm gonna throw my seven inch swimmer and just kind of see if I could get uh, a big bite. Kicking off day three practice here. Got a lot to work on. Later on this uh, this evening, this afternoon, I mean, we're definitely gonna look for some sight fish as well, some bedding fish, but again, the whole goal is to find bedding areas first and then back out and just kind of reaction bait fish and, and wind a swim jig and wind a chatter bait and wind a swim bait out in front of those bedding areas. If they go to spawning, I could easily slide up there with them, but I really want to focus on that four to six feet of water and those little grass depressions and grass edges. So let's get after it. 
looking at some of the uh, river turns. There's a lot of rock in this place. This is the Flint River, but look at down imaging and side imaging. I mean, there's a lot of rock on the bank, and you you wouldn't think that looking at the banks here. The banks are just like clay, kind of gradual banks. Every now and then you'll get a high ascent patch like that right there. I mean, that stuff is flippable, some trash. I mean, you could spend all day in here just flipping away, you know, but can it sustain four days of a tournament? I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just a giant river. All right, a little update here. After running the whole river from the launch ramp going south towards the lake, uh, one, I learned how to kind of run, you know, the channel. Uh, it's kind of treacherous, but, um, and it's not very well marked. So uh, I was able to build a trail through there and I stopped along the way, fished a swim bait. I thought I'd find more rocky points and current breaks and things like that, but uh, I just didn't find uh, anything I liked in the river. As soon as I got to the, the lake and continued on with my, my pattern, you know, those grassy coves, the little drop-offs and holes in the grass in front of these spawning coves, clear water or clearer water, I started getting bites. Several, you know, male buck bass are up there. Feels like they're starting to spawn. The water temperature is 63 degrees, so things are happening. And I got a little cheat code here. What I did here on uh, Lake Master mapping, Hummingbird Lake Master, is I, I overlay the satellite imagery here. So yet again, you know, this is satellite imagery is coming into play. And just as soon as I got out of the river and pulled into you know one of these spot, one of these areas here that's got a cove um, and these nice little troughs that are cruising you know that are going through these uh, uh, you know these these grassy flats, I, I got bites. So the pattern is holding, and now it is my job for the rest of practice to just go through here, rely on satellite imagery, and uh, and just fish all the little openings and cuts in the grass like right through here and right through here and just wind a swim jig and a chatterbait and a swim bait just as fast as I can through there and just trying to get a couple more bites. So, you know, that is absolutely the pattern and that's what I'm going to run with here. So I sprinkled some waypoints here that, um, that kind of matched up with the pattern. So for the rest of the day, that's what I'm gonna look for. All right, a little update here. It's about a little past two o'clock and I basically have been looking for those spawning areas all the way from the river I'm just about at the dam now and I've been favoring the south side because there's a gnarly south wind. I just had a couple bites here and there, like nothing to write home about, but those areas that I found that second day when you guys hopped in the boat uh, are looking better every single hour. So, you know, water temperatures climbing up to 63 degrees, um, but it still doesn't feel like they're like making a big push, like a big spawning push, like at all. You know, those areas I found yesterday are looking better and better. As you can see, the wind is blowing real good. Um, I pretty much, you know, fished everything I wanted to fish today. I picked out those areas. I had a few bites this morning and it seems like the further down the lake I went on that south bank, the less bites I got. So that further uh, gives me confidence in those two areas I found. As soon as you guys hopped in the boat with me, like we were, we got some really good bites. So. You know, and that area's got a lot of life to it. We saw those birds diving on all that bait and all those bluegill and everything. So I feel really good about it. Covered a whole bunch of water here. I'm tired, we're back-to-back -back tournaments. It's about 4.30, the lake is dying down. I'm not seeing too many more boats. Um, but all in all, uh, definitely a, a good practice for me. It could be a lot worse. I, I, you know, I, I, I could have not had that six, seven pound clue. Um, and just that one biting my swim jig buried down in that grass um, really told me kind of how the bigger females are setting up. So I appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, we'll see you at the next one.